All right, what's up, everybody? This is Steven Story. I have Julian Cardenas with me. Cardenas, yeah, nice to meet you Cardenas. all. Uh, today, guys, we're going to be talking about his journey as an independent adjuster, specifically as a field adjuster uh, in Canada. Now, don't be thrown off because he's from Canada. We're going to be talking about his 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 uh, his career strategy, how he went on to excel in Xactimate, how he did well in um, in field adjusting this year, and just some of his goals and, and things he wants out of the industry. So, Julian, welcome. Thank you so much for, for hopping on the call with us, man. It's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me there, man. Uh, it's a pleasure to have reached out to you a month ago, and I'm happy to to do this with you so we can help more people to discover that crazy, crazy world, man. Yeah, man. So so give everybody a little bit of, uh, of information about you, man. So where are you from? How old are you? How long have you been in the business? So I'm 27 um, years old. Uh, I was born in Bolivia, South America, uh, and I have like a uh, um, Bolivian father and a Canadian mom. Uh, and at seven years old, I moved to Canada with them. So since then, I, I've been here, uh, Canadian uh, education system, everything. Um, studied in business. I did my degree. I was in my master uh, when I met the person that introduced me to the world. Uh, it's been maybe 14 months ago. So we could say a year. I didn't know anything about that world a year ago. And things go so fast. And I saw an opportunity, so I just grabbed it. And yeah, since then, I I, I think I, I did a lot in that industry. I, yeah, how could you say I evolved a lot in that industry? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it's going super well, man. I had the best year so far. Wow. So so tell me, man. So like, how many deployments have you had? Like, how was it getting your first deployment? Was it pretty difficult? Yeah. Was it, how so was... how I got into this world, man. So I was in Alberta, uh, in Canada, uh, in the Rocky Mountains. It's a very mm -hmm. beautiful place. I was just there living my best life, you know, hiking, uh, meeting friends. And I was in a bar actually watching a soccer game with, when a, an American came at me. Well, came at me and my friends and he was like, hey, guys, can I can I just sit down with you? And we were cool with that. So we said, yeah. And I instantly connected more uh, with that guy because I don't know, we had so much uh, common points together. So mm -hmm. we started talking. Uh, we became friends like on Instagram and from time to time we were seeing each other. I think we had like one or two adventures in a month in, in, in Banff. So I knew I knew him only for like a month. I saw him two or three times and then he just texted me. Hey, do you want to come and help me on a storm uh, in Calgary? And I had no idea what he was talking about. And he said, yeah, you're, you're just going to drive me around, you know, around town. So this is uh, I said yes. And this is how I discovered the world. So what happened on on that deployment i just came with him I, I was just driving him while he was you know writing claims in the car and yeah. this is how i discovered to really work fast and this is how i discovered the, the, the industry and i was amazed dude and you know um it, it was a fun job but like i understood how crazy it was when he gave me like the true numbers about how much he was making yeah. every day and and everything and it just blew my mind so i, I was saying like why why the hell am i doing a master <laughs> i don't want to be doing that and especially like i never saw myself as like enough uh, doing an office job being mm -hmm. inside working for somebody else i, I never wanted that in my life so uh, mm -hmm. when i discovered that world i just saw something that really fits me and yeah so he he, he i did maybe like um, well, well, he told me to come and work with him in Calgary and I ended up doing two months with him. Mm -hmm. So that was my first deployment as an assistant. I was just driving with him, but I was doing a lot more. Like every day I was adding new tasks, new tasks. So uh -huh. I was doing all the scheduling with him. I learned how to talk to the customers. You know, I was, I was honestly mm -hmm. doing everything uh, about his schedule, uh, learning uh, more about everything. Uh, well, like, you know, how to process a claim and everything. So, right. yeah, I started as an assistant uh, for two months last year, mm -hmm. uh, doing that in Calgary on a hailstorm. And uh, mm -hmm. after that uh, storm, I, I told you I was amazed. So uh, I just knew that I would go back home uh, in Montreal and just learn about the job in general. So, right. um, and I saw myself in the year be an adjuster by myself. Right. So that's where i come back i came back home uh, last last winter and i did all the everything i needed to 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 be ready for this season mm -hmm. that i just ended now mm -hmm. and so you quit matt you quit you quit grad school yeah so i i was a business student i did my degree i was about i was about to not end my master i was maybe like halfway there and 
yeah, I, 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 I just saw a lifestyle. You know, I, I not only saw money, I, I, I saw mm -hmm. a lifestyle because, you know, having right. money when you don't have time, I, for me, uh, I would, that's not something I, I, how could I say? I wouldn't want that, you know? Uh, and I saw this this guy, this American that I'm talking oh. to you about, and, uh, you know, I, I, I saw his Instagram. I saw the lifestyle he was having since yeah. he, uh, he, he discovered that job, and that's what I wanted, man. The guy was just traveling 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 everywhere he doesn't even have a home and like i swear yeah. he doesn't pay rent he's just either like working on a deployment uh, during hurricane season and the rest of the time he's not even home he's just traveling the world living in yeah. hostels and i'm a big traveler backpacker adventurer so I, I just said like man this is what i'm gonna do and no matter what this is what i'm i'm, I'm gonna like do everything to to be an adjuster and yeah so uh, i came back home and and um I did, uh, I, I focused on like what to do to be an mm -hmm. adjuster and I can give you more details about what I did. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So we'll skip past licensing. We all know we got to get licensed to be an adjuster, but like for you specifically being a field adjuster, after you learned some of the processes with your American friend, when you came back home and started studying, were you looking at exact admits, ability? What were you, what were you doing? So, yeah. That's the thing with my buddy, um, he really uh, teached me how to deal with a claim. You know, when you receive the claim, you call the client. Uh, he showed me how to schedule nine uh, inspection, maybe sometimes 12 a day, you know, for a hailstorm. Wow. So that's massive. We were moving fast. My guy it was so fast. So I already had this because of him. Um, and uh, at one point at the end of the season, I remember I, I was trying to write claims. I was not able to. Uh, he 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 didn't have time to show me how to uh, use Xactimate. Mm -hmm. So when I was like trying to to do the the second part of it of the job, you know, writing claims, mm -hmm. I was not able to, to to do it. But I was able to do all the rest. So I knew that um, during winter time, I, I really had to master Xactimate and writing claims. Uh, so this is what I focused on when I came back to Montreal. Uh, so what I did is I took, you know, Xactimate is a really nice, uh, how could I say? Software yeah, system. Software system and also like education. Uh, you know, they have so many courses. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to learn the program. And like, mm -hmm. honestly, you just give a few hours a day and it was not complicated at all. So what I did is I, I took like, I could see here, it's, it's called like, the OTC, it's like online teaching courses or something. Mm -hmm. It's you go at your own pace. It's like yeah, all videos right. are already uh, registered with a teacher and everything mm -hmm. is breakdown. It's like two minutes video. So it's never like too much information. They give you two, like they, they, they just teach you a skill, then you practice it. They teach you another mm -hmm. skill, two minutes, and then you practice it. So it's mm -hmm. really, really well done. So yeah, I ended up doing the um, certification level one, mm -hmm. which was, so basic you know i mean you, yeah, you build like the, it's yeah. like you build the easiest roofs and rooms so that was not mm -hmm. a challenge uh then i said to myself i, I need more because it was way too simple <laughs> so yeah. i did yeah. a level exact mid two mm -hmm. which was a bit more complicated but again you just practice to do a few roofs a few rooms and it just mm -hmm. gets very easy with practice there's nothing complicated with that you know you have a few tools and it's always the same tools you just different situation but always right. use the same tool so learning exactimate honestly it was intimidating intimidating at first intimidating. when i was seeing my, my buddy build a room on exactimate a sketch or, or a roof i was like damn that looks very hard and i was mm -hmm. scared to attack and, and go into exactimate but when once i started doing the courses man it was very easy oh. so um i did the one i did the two and uh, i then realized that that was more than enough to be able to write claims uh, i reached out to other people and like i was i was looking to see if it's worth to do the level three but like some very good managers they told me don't worry about level three like level three nobody needs level three so mm -hmm. yeah I, I then came back um well I, I started my first deployment this with this uh this summer and writing claims was super easy like i believe if anyone does the level one and two they can write anything. I mean, not anything for sure. When you have big storms and you have right. like a, a a full house to adjust, it might get more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for what I did, wind storms, uh, hail storms, uh, even a bit of water damage, ba basement damage, mm -hmm. uh, level one, level two, gave me everything I needed. So, so this is why I believe I was able to work that 
that fast this year is because man i was writing claims so fast and i know that for other people they they, they can write a claim in two hours and i can do that in 12 minutes you know wow. so and but I'm, the, I'm talking about small hell claims you know it's not like <laughs> yeah. probably not what you're doing but like yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it just gives you a very good base for sure so about it, let's let's break down because for me eight claims in a day is crazy so nine to 12 claims is just like another level. Like how were you and your friend able to do this so fast? So first of all, we were both work. We were having both a desk next to each other. We had four screens and uh, he was just writing claims all day while I was basically doing all the rest. So um, I was for sure, you, you have to be two to do that many claims, you know? So I was literally just scheduling uh, everything for him. And I think that's a huge part. He didn't have to pick up the phone once. He right. wasn't opening any email. I was doing all that stuff for him. So that mm -hmm. helped a lot. And then I believe we were just extremely fast um, inspecting houses, you know? I know like your adjusting firm will always try to tell you like you need two hours to inspect the house or they really want you to do things so slow and I, i've seen like some guys inspect the house and it's so slow man I, I just want i run you know like i'm literally almost running like around the house things like mm -hmm. this so um yeah that's uh how we learned to do it just like he was on the roof trying to find roof damage while i was doing the walls yeah and things yeah. like this or doing the hub or anything like this so mm -hmm. that helped a lot uh and yeah so we came back home after like inspecting maybe eight nine a day we were coming back home and i was just preparing the schedule for next day while he was just writing so i mean that's how we were able uh to fit mm -hmm. eight nine a day i don't know if that answers the question no it answers a bit so how did you how did you do it this season did you have your own assistant were you doing it alone this time like how'd you do it i was doing that alone man i i was I was working like crazy. I could say that I averaged maybe seven a day. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This, this, all right. All it was, right okay. Now it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I was averaging seven, but just by myself. Uh, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and I managed it, man, honestly, just every day, just a little bit of scheduling in the morning. Then I would go inspect. Uh, well, I, I like to break down my day in two. So I would go inspect like three or four. Mm -hmm. Then I would come back home and ride them uh, and then as soon as I'm done I leave for three more and then mm -hmm. I come back in the evening and ride those three because I don't like to like inspect and have 10 or 9 to ride because I start to forget about the first right. one so yeah. I always like to break down my day in two and yeah so I was scheduling a bit in the morning then uh, go uh, out for three ride those three then go out for three or four more and ride them and were you turning them in? Were you turning them in the same day or? Always the same day, man. Like always. I hate being uh, being behind. So maybe sometimes, you know, I was one or two late, but never more than 24 or 48 hours for sure. I love it. I love it. And do you think, um, and what, what role did like being organized play in your process of being able to do seven claims a day? And what, 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 sorry? Organized, like being organized. Do you remember this What's your thing? question exactly? Sorry. I said, I said, what role did being organized play? Like, were you, are you a very organized adjuster? Like when you're handling okay. all this? Yes, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm, 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 I probably have a disease, you know, like I need to be in control of everything. I, I uh -huh. hate to work with other people because I like to do it my way. And even like when I had an assistant for like one or two weeks, I was literally asking to do something, but I would end up doing the work over him because I wanted my way and yeah. yeah I'm extremely organized I'm 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 freaking out you know like my, my schedule has to be perfect like even like typo errors in my schedule like I, that annoys me so like I, I'm very very organized that's for sure and okay. I, I think I think organization is probably like the best quality you can have as an adjuster if I agree I and agree. and multitasking and, and like you know a little bit like a server you know you always have like a, a list of things to do but you always need to know what comes first so it's like knowing right. to give like the right priority to, to to your tasks for sure i agree and i think i think that's something that i became a stickler for as a desk adjuster after i left the field so I've, I've done field adjusting and i've done desk adjusting but i've done a lot more desk adjusting but what i found is the best adjusters are extremely organized their for desktop sure. like their computer is organized their workspace is organized. The room they're in is or like everything is organized 
and their day is set. And I think that if we can get in routines, right, in our personal life, not just in our working life, if we if we if we can stay in a routine, we're going to do really really well. Going to sleep at the exactly. same time, waking up at the same time, eating at That's the same. That's exactly time. what I was trying to do with my mate. You know, just stick to a routine and same thing every day because that's how you really start to get a momentum and and like get your numbers right. on a daily basis because right. if you start to improvise and change you like every like one day you go in the morning the other day you go in, in at night this is where you don't really get a flow and yeah uh it's really just as you said building a system and then you just how could i say you just you stick to it after that i, want, I don't want to say abuse it but like you yeah just, yeah you, you just beat it. I mean? and you gotta yeah. like I think like uh, like for me, um, what I found in general, and I think we're going back a bit, so we're going to step away from adjusting just in general, how our lifestyle is set up. When I'm adjusting, I'm not talking to my friends at night. I do not go out. I'm not, I only watch certain types of television. I don't watch interesting television because I don't want to stay up all night watching TV shows. For sure. I watch boring TV shows when I'm adjusting. Um, I try to eat similar things. Because yeah. I know how long it will take to, to cook or how long it will take for that restaurant to make the food for me. For I'm not sure. trying new things while I'm deployed. And I try to have physical activity. So I'm trying to work out and rest my mind when I'm not working. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What about you? How is that for you? Same thing, man. Uh, honestly, it, it, it's hard like working working that much and and being so busy you have to eliminate all distractions around you you know so yeah. as you said like you know i was like kind of kind of seeing a girl but like i told her like for the next three months i'm not i'm, I'm not existent you know because yeah. i need to focus on my job and this is what i told her and this is what i did like you need as you said like you just try to 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 just focus on work so as you said not interesting shows just shows like you know to to, to just how could I say just escape, yeah. you know, because sometimes it's yeah. good to forget about work for, for an mm -hmm. hour, maybe. Yeah. So this is a, yeah, I was doing this like, you you know, they're just trying to program myself as a robot. Like, honestly, yeah, it sounds crazy, but th yeah. this is how you get your numbers. And um, yeah, so um, I was also just like you working out a lot in my hotel room, uh, mm -hmm. in my hotel rooms, just, you know, like 30 minutes is enough yeah. just to get the mean out of my body and, and just yeah. like restart, refresh my, my, my mind. So this is what I was doing. Um, what, what, what else would you like to know about? Um, I mean, I think, I think just talking, we'll, we'll keep talking. Let's we'll keep talking. I think like for me, what I've seen over the years is adjusters who can't do this. They gain a bunch of weight. They start getting sick. Uh, they get too stressed out and they have to take a lot of time off because they, they're not taking care of themselves. I think that, exactly. Uh, you know, I'll give you two examples. I saw two people die on my deployment, two adjusters. How did that happen? Cancer. They like, both had cancer and they never went to the doctor. Okay. So they, they were just sick. prioritizing work over their, no. their health. And you know, they were like long-term adjusters, like 10 years adjusting, Yeah. you know, never yeah. working out, yeah. eating whatever, smoking. Yeah. Stressed and, out. You know what I tried to do? Um, I'm a big athlete. You know, I was performing all my life uh, with high high level. And um, when I started doing that with my buddy, I said, man, like at the end of the day, right now, we're, we're almost doing athlete stuff. You know, we're performing so much yeah. that it's just normal to eat the best food, man. You, right. I was, you know, like it was not some adjuster would say, I don't want to lose time going to the grocery store and cooking. And I was taking, not every day, you don't go to grocery store right. every day, but I was, I was taking the time to go to a grocery store, do a big ass, like just buy yeah. all foods. And I'm talking to you, no sugar, yeah. no, not nothing fat, man, just the good thing. Cause we're yeah. athletes right now and you want to fuel yeah. your body with the best. And even I know like sometimes I was like, man, I cannot work out right now. Cause I'm going to lose one hour of work. I could write two claims, but if you want to, it's a marathon, man. If you want to really? like do a long season, you need to take care of your body and fuel your body and train because that's how we going to. Right. So literally, I was feeling like an athlete, man, just like performing and taking care of my body. And for sure, uh, adjusters who don't take that little extra time to take care of them are just going to crash. I completely agree, man. And, and see, here's the thing: what people don't understand about adjusting 
we use so much brain power that you have to eat to fuel your brain, not just your body. Oh my you God. Know? Yeah, man. For you know, sure. like I switched my diet. I had a, I, I ate a high fat diet. So my brain would have more energy, you know, yeah. and then so it would be like high fat, high protein. And I would cut the carbs down because I knew that I wasn't going to be standing up. So you were, you're a field adjuster. So you're moving around. I'm not. So I have to change. I, I cannot eat high carbs and maintain a regular body weight. I yeah. will gain weight sitting down, even if I'm working out. And so yeah. um, y'all don't, for everybody that's watching this, uh, for my students, y'all look, me and Julian are a little bit different because we come from an athletic background. But even with that, I find that a lot of adjusters don't drink enough water. So they get very tired during the day. And when, you, when your mind gets tired, you start to make mistakes, right? For you start sure. making mistakes at 2, 3, 4, 5 p.m. We might not be off till 7 p.m. You can't afford to have half of your day where, where you're making mental errors just because your, your mind is tired. You need to be yeah. drinking two to three liters of water every day. And you need to be eating. Uh, if you're a desk adjuster, you, you have to eat breakfast. You have to eat lunch. Mm -hmm. You have to eat a good dinner, a good solid dinner. And another thing is uh, ergonomics, right? So like right now, guys, I have on blue light glasses. Uh, when you're doing exactament a lot, you're going to have eye strain. When we're looking on these computers all the time, typing, our, um, we have carpal tunnel syndrome. You need, you need to have uh, pads for your mouse. You need to have pads for your, your keyboard. You need to buy a good chair to sit in. You know? Oh my god, yeah, dude, I, I I I bought a very good chair this this uh, summer because it's important. And I, I at first I was just using like hotel rooms chairs, and mm -hmm. I was honestly so in pain, so I, I had to do it just to yep. feel better, you know, because you, you want to take care of yourself so you don't hate the job at the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. All these little things add up. And another thing I'll tell you all is you need to invest in a masseuse and a chiropractor. Can you repeat a, mas a masseuse? What a masseuse is like a massage, like getting massages. Uh, yeah, a masseuse. And you need to get a chiropractor. You know, yeah. you're sitting down like this all day. You need to work on your back. Like have somebody take care of your body. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I did at the end of the season. So I was in a hotel and they had like this clinic, you know, with uh, yeah. masseuse, you say. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was, uh, how could you say, just bringing a lot of benefit just to like yeah. get and take care of you as you said and yeah uh, yeah yeah all right yeah so so uh julian next thing let's talk about the financial part of this you don't you don't necessarily have to share your numbers uh i know what you did um but tell me how you took care of your money so you can be off because you're gonna be off until next june it's september now you plan on being off for like eight months correct yeah so how do you take care of the money and how do you plan your your finances out so you can have this time off. So you mean with the money I just made with this yeah, time the money just made, yeah. what I'm planning to do or well, like how did you budget your money so you didn't spend all the money while you were deployed is my question. Sorry, how did I budget my money during the deployment? Yeah, during the yeah, how did you manage your money during the deployment so when you finish your deployment you could have a lot of money saved? Well, I mean I was not really thinking about that during the deployment, to be honest with you. I, I was um, not very like having or sticking to a plan. I was honestly just paying all my business expenses that <coughs> I had to pay, you know, like it was only, mm -hmm. um, well, what, what is work related was like hotel, gas and like rental car exactly. and, and food. But like, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, I, I was not watching myself or i was just paying the minimum to be able to work and right. i was just stacking money because you know the pays were so big so i was just stacking right. stacking and i right. knew it's more at the end of the storm season that i knew that i would right. go meet the professionals and be, be able to 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 like build a strategy for my needs right. for mid or, or long term but i i didn't i didn't have any strategy to be honest with you during deployment i see, um, I see. it was just work work hard as possible Make as much just, money just and we'll figure it out. After. Those numbers. Yeah, well, exactly that, man. I was like, you okay. know, because storm season is so short. I, I, I was yeah. just my only focus was really get those numbers every day. And you'll, you'll just see later on. And I know right. sometimes like tax wise, I was maybe not paying with my right car, business car or things like mm -hmm. this. But I, I, I was not thinking about that, unfortunately. But yeah. at the same time, I know that next, you know, I'm just going to learn every year, you know, and, and right. for sure next uh, storm season i'll be more prepared for that and 
do do you have some strategies or, or ways to i'm asking you what do you do but for me I, i'm very similar i'm very similar in that like when i'm working i try not to spend a lot of money i didn't i used to do that in the past where i would just you know have you know expensive dinners and buying clothes and things like that but now what i found is is that i enjoy the freedom when i'm not working like i really enjoy my lifestyle when i'm not working as an adjuster and so that requires me to have more money you know mm -hmm. after employment and so i'm similar to you uh now in that when i'm when i'm deployed i'm keeping everything very simple you know i'm not trying to buy new cars yeah. i'm not trying to buy get a new apartment or a bigger apartment or something a recurring bill that's more expensive you know and i'm trying to hit uh numbers every month as far as amount of money saved right yeah. if i'm making ten thousand dollars a month i want to save sixty percent of, yeah. of you know after taxes so you're saying that at first you were kind of like spending all that money that you were making yeah. on the paycheck yeah yeah, yeah well that, that I, in my first deployment not me because first of all like i was far away from home i was literally i spent the whole summer by myself so i didn't have any social life you know i, I didn't right. have any i was far away from home so like yeah. in, in a remote place saskatchewan is like a big province in canada with just right. a bunch of farmers and, and canola fields and things like that mm -hmm. so no social life no friends around me so this is how i was able to just i was work like my body was work so you know i was yeah. I, I, I was just exactly just saving the money and and yeah i was not doing like your first year i was really just saving for the future and wow. um as i said also it, it's it's easy for me to not spend money because i'm i'm a big like backpacker and like the only place i want to put my money in is just travels you know so like right. it's easy for me to not buy a big car or a big apartment because right. it's always been not my priority priority so right right, right. Yeah, ju just saving for 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 what i love you know for activities and experiences uh travels. let's talk about that we talked about that a little bit me and me and julian for those of y'all who don't know i backpacked a lot in my youth uh and I climbed a couple mountains. Julian really likes climbing mountains. Julian, let's talk about some lifestyle stuff real quick. Because I think that's the funnest part of insurance, Justin, is the lifestyle you get to have after you've done the work. So what, what are your plans sure. now? You finish the season. What are you doing these next few months? Yeah, for sure. So, well, I'm, I'm going to do what I think most adjusters do, man. Like, they just live their best life during uh, off time. And this is what I love is that uh, I've met a few adjusters and everyone's doing what they love, you know, and yeah. I have many friends that are not adjusters and they have a lot of things that they do, but they cannot do it. So like, yeah. this is why I love talking to adjusters. They talk to me about their dreams, their passion, how they reached it. And I'm, I'm really someone that gives a lot of importance to what you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. you, you be able, you, you need to do it. Otherwise, like you're just going to regret. So um, my goal, uh, as you said, like, uh, or as I said, is I'm a big, big adventurer. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to travel, man. I have eight months to do whatever I like. So it's oh. going to it's gonna be a, a little bit of a Nepal just to go uh, do some high altitude um, mountaineering. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I want to go to South America, as I told you, um, mm -hmm. just do backpacking trips in pure wilderness. I take mm -hmm. pictures. I'm a big photographer. So yeah, man, I'm just yeah. gonna do what I like to do: uh, snowboard in who knows which mountain. Wow, man. We'll see. But yeah, but you know, uh, as I'm telling you, um, I'm gonna. Uh, I mean, I, I did such great numbers this year that I can definitely like spoil myself with those activities. But definitely, yeah. most of it is gonna go into investment and and real estate because mm -hmm. i don't want to be that guy who just spends everything he earns I, right i want to be i want to be retired at 35 36 you so can. you can so man. yeah if, if you you're wise with your money in that industry everything is possible so mm -hmm. so yeah I'm, I'm trying to have fun but i'm trying to make sure that i may not have to work in the future so right. yeah just trying to balance you know and that's smart man because i think like and i've talked to Talk to a lot of adjusters over the years, man. And I find that to me in this industry, if you're still in this industry after five or six years, it's because you want to do it. Yeah. Right. But I find I've found a lot of people over the years, they're still insurance adjusters because they have to do it, because they keep spending all their money. Oh man, yeah. So they just <laughs> literally they 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 left the rat race, but they started a new rat race in their own <laughs> way. Rat race. 
because yeah. it's high pay. And so, you oh get, yeah, like, I get what you mean. Yeah, more you, stress, you, more everything. Yeah, I got, I got to get more deployment. I got, I had this new bill I got to pay, and and, and and you're making ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars a month, and you're still poor. Yeah, no, that that's bro, that's a nightmare. That <laughs> you can't yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, man. No. And I think that that's where like I started at your age. I was 27, 26, 27. I'm 34 now, you know, and I don't have to do that part of the business anymore. I don't have to go take every deployment because I took care of my money, you know, yeah. and I For changed sure. my habits. You know, like it's not about the cars or the clothes or the experiences uh, in the beginning. You know, I think if you can focus the first two years, at least the first two or three years to get your habits in order as far as your finances, you're going to be fine after that. Oh, yeah. For you sure, know? man. You know, and I think a yeah. lot of people are just not a lot of people, but I've seen some people where the industry becomes very stressful for them because they have to make the money. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't want to be in that position for sure. No, no, bro. Like, and that's why like I, I ask people about it. I want to talk about it because it's an elephant in the room, right? Okay, yes, we can make this much money, but what do we do with it after that? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not an investment advisor, but it's like, hey, take care of your money. If it's the lifestyle you want, you can have it in this business. Like, look at you, man. You're backpacking, you know. Yeah. You know, traveling, all that stuff. Like, you going to Nepal. You going to Nepal, bro. You know, you know how hard it is for people to do that. To go to Nepal, you just like, yeah, I'm going to Nepal. You what? I say, do you understand how how difficult that is for so many people? To you know, they might plan for a Nepal trip for five years. Yeah. Yeah. And because the insurance adjusting, you're like, I'm, I'm going to Nepal. I'll be there. Yeah, that's crazy. But, it just sounds so easy to me right now. You know, I was like, okay, let's go to Nepal. Uh, let's book that expedition, which is, you know, it's not cheap to go like high no. altitude mountaineering. And yeah, man, like it was a dream of mine. So like my biggest dream, you know, I wanted to go to the biggest mountains in the world. So I, my plan in my life, you know, was to to do my business thing, be, be an employee. And maybe if I'm lucky at 32, 33, find I don't like the right job where I can take a few months off, you know, because you yeah. need to ask for time off when you're doing your regular job, and uh, you need to 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 save money over the years because it's quite right. an expensive trip if you want to do things like Everest or other things. So, right. I mean, it's, it I just feel so grateful right now, and and kind of feels weird that I'm 27 and I can do that already, you know, after right. the first year, man. So like, I mean, dreams do come true in that industry. Dreams do come true, bro. But you sacrifice, you put in the effort. Absolutely, man. Time you know nobody else did it for you you know no so, exactly i took took the risk and and put the work in you know because uh, <coughs> i told you that that american who i met a year ago he also had an assistant before me and that assistant just like me you know we were talking sometimes and we we both wanted to be an adjuster like our our guy yeah. in a year and and yeah. big big difference I worked all winter long just on my computer, man, learning Xactimate while he was not doing shit. And, uh, bro, he he got put on the blacklist uh, this year because he was doing such an awful job, you know? He, I mean, awesome. adjusting, yes, you make a lot of money, and I feel like people sometimes think it's easy. It's an easy job, you know? It's a hack. It's not easy, man. Like, you need really to be, like, good at what you're doing organized as we said and and you need mm -hmm. to learn the program because you, you won't do right. anything if you don't master uh, exactly and so yeah as you said it, it was worth uh, not worth it but like i deserved it because i put many many hours right. where the other guy was not and like at the end of the day i did 530 claims this summer and he didn't do any like he he just <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's, yeah, dude. that's so amazing man like but you know but that's the thing, man. I was I was talking to some people yesterday, and I said uh, some some adjusters, and I said I chose to be excellent. I wanted to be excellent at what I did. I didn't want to just be another adjuster. I wanted to be very very good. If it cost mm -hmm. me six hundred dollars to get this course, I'm paying for it. If it cost me, you know, a week or two months or whatever working a deployment I really don't like, so I can learn a different skill, I did it. You know, mm -hmm. because I knew that. At some point, I would learn the things I need to learn to, to earn the kind of money I wanted to earn. And yeah. I think that's what separates a lot of people in this industry because, like you said, like your friend got blacklisted. Just because you're a good person doesn't mean you won't get fired. Yeah. And they'll ask you not to come back if you mess up too much. You know, it's, it's, it is that serious, this business, because 
these people, when you're going on a claim, it's because their house is torn apart. It's damaged. They need help. If you cannot yeah. provide help in a competent way, they're going to get you out of there. They're going to fire you. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, you know, they, they, they want fast guys. You know, if, if they have mm -hmm. the option between two guys who do the who write good claims, they will just take the fastest guy because yeah. that's what it's all about in that industry. You know, you just want to end the storm or the deployment as soon as possible. So I agree. I agree. They want to finish the deployment. They want you to finish the deployment as soon as possible. They want those claims handled as, as soon as possible, you know. And so it's, it's something that I think that there's a seriousness to the business. And that's why you have to perform the way you perform. Yeah. I perform the way I perform. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's exactly, you, it's, it has to be very serious. No, you cannot take it slightly or, or sure. just think that it's going to be a walk in the park. It, and I told you like athlete mode, because it's like you're performing. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Like robot mode, however, whatever mode you need to be in. And I think one more thing, uh, Julian, we talked about this, but we need to, I want to go back to it one more time just mm -hmm. to drive it home is personal life, okay? You don't have a personal life when you're deployed. Forget about it. Forget about all of it. You know, if you're married, you got family and friends or family, something like that, I understand. But outside of your small bubble, you don't need to be out here being social, you know? Yeah. Uh, I've missed a lot of weddings. I've missed birthday parties, graduations. I've missed Christmas before. I've missed Christmas like three times. Yeah. But Christmas for me is just another day, you know, but I knew that if I make the sacrifices now, I can be free the next three months or next six months or nine months. So if I just got to skip one day, so be it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I can really relate to that. You know, I, I, I spend I'm I'm a big social guy. I like to go to events. I like to go to the bar with my friends. I like to go to uh, music festivals, weddings any, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of, it was probably the hardest part this summer, yeah. just being all by myself. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, like literally I didn't speak to anyone else than insurance for like three or four months. So that was yeah. really hard just seeing everyone enjoying the, their summer time. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I know that the freedom and what I'm building right now is going to give me so much more than just like short and fun, you know, like for a, for an event or things like that. So yeah, it was definitely hard, man. But uh, I mean, for guys like us who think further and really want something right. or an ambition or, or objectives, mm -hmm. yes, like I I knew that every day that I was missing was worth it, you know, because right. I mean, who who can say that they're gonna have eight months off to go to Nepal and Patagonia or thing all the things that you do, you know, like. Yeah. At the end of the day, I was envying them, but and it's not the goal to make them envy us, but like it, that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna see like right. a guy that is so free that yeah, uh, yeah, all those hours were definitely worth it. Yeah, man, the sacrifice is so worth it. Julian, is there anything you want to leave the students with? The people that are brand new adjusters are trying to get licensed. Is there anything else you want to tell them before we finish up for today? Like any advice? Yeah, any advice? Any advice? Uh, I honestly think. Man, I, I really think um, get the license. I believe they, they can all, all do it, you know, like you it's part of your course and anything like that. I, I mm -hmm. think, I, I don't know if it's a good advice or anything like that. My best advice is really put the time in Xactimate. Um, learn, mm -hmm. uh, do the level certification one, which is a walk in the park, man. Like, honestly, it's anyone can do that you don't have to have any foundation in building or construction you're just uh -huh. gonna learn pretty basic stuff and once you get the level two that's gonna be a little bit more challenge uh, challenging but man mm -hmm. i think i think that's where um it makes a very big difference uh between adjusters because once you learn how to write properly a claim and make it easy for the for the, um, the reviewers oh the reviewers okay. the, the reviewers and you know like um, this is where they're going to love you. And this is where you're going to see that. I mean, they just like to have very, very nice claims organized. You know, it just makes mm -hmm. it so much easier on them. So I think that's where I would put the most importance to it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what else? I mean, just general advice, like it, it's going to be worth it no matter what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it will be. It will be worth it. And it's, and it's, it's definitely been worth it for me, man. My whole life changed. My yeah, whole definitely, man. Yeah. Like, this, this has been it's been a wild ride. And you know, yeah. I started at your age at 27. And I think like 
when I was 27, before I became an adjuster, I felt kind of old, you know, like I felt kind of like, old yeah. out, you know, and after I became an adjuster, I felt young again. You know what? Like I'm, I'm, I'm always saying right now, it's like, it's the beginning of my new life. Yeah. Because yeah. It's literally like for me right now, it's year zero or like year yeah. one, because now everything is possible, man. Like, yeah. So yeah, I really relate. It just gives you like a second life, and I couldn't really understand how you felt young again. You know, mm -hmm. even though you're still young, you know. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I really understand what you mean because everything that you knew before changes, man. Like, mm -hmm. so it's a rebirth. I completely agree. Yeah. Well, look, Julian, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna end the recording here. Okay, and we'll we'll keep talking for a second though. Hold on, let me okay. just uh, get it off, and then um, end the broadcast. There we go.